the, the example I wanted to share, you're all familiar with, but let's talk about everybody's favorite retailer in the world, Ikea. Wait, not your favorite? Like, it's a nightmare, right? Yeah. Like you walk in, they got to give you a map. Oh, you're in for hell on earth. You can't find what you're looking for because they purposely design it that way. When you find what you're looking for, nobody to help you feng shui your living room or whatever. You got to take a picture of the tag or write down the code of where you're really going to find it in the pens. warehouse. Pull the massive box onto a cart that doesn't have brakes. Pull it, like pull your car in backwards and jam it in the back of it Tetris style while F-bombing your partner, your spouse, whoever. Driving home, opening the box, there's 150 parts in there. And the only word on the work instructions is like Svarta or whatever Scandinavian, right? It's a freaking nightmare. Then you're like, oh, it, I, you get this whole thing assembled and you're like, you know what? This looks great. Hey, honey, we should go get the end tables for this bedroom set. Like, what, what are you, nuts? Well, Ikea is the number one furniture retailer in the world for 14 straight years. Why? because of that idea that you were talking about. It's, it's not a big funnel, right? People don't walk in there going, I need a salesperson to help me design a modern, like, no. What they do is they brand to the world what they give up to be great at their core. But this is the marketing element of what makes Ikea so powerful. They tell the world, you're gonna find it, pick it, pack it, shove it, assemble it. But we do that so we can give you modern Scandinavian design furniture that you didn't pay much for. And there's good meatballs too. But besides that, the idea for all of us that I don't see enough B2B companies embracing is, hey, like, why can't we tell the market, hey, this is going to be that, you know, Paul, you were kind of doing this, right? This is going to be our core. The customers that want this, we want to be the best in the world for. There's stuff on the outside here that maybe we're not as good at. And if those are going to be the important components, I will gladly make the connection for you if you'd like. That's what I've done in my own business, yeah. right? Like that's, it's just the way that I think that you might jam your way into one deal that you're not a perfect fit for and get that short-term revenue. But when that customer finds out that there's maybe a better option and you didn't tell them, you get that deal, but it might cost you five more you never knew existed because that one person, their ability to blow horn, share feedback on websites, B2B review websites are everywhere now, or just go to their buddies and go, ah, I bought this thing. It kind of sucks. Those five people in their peer network are never calling you, yeah. right? So I believe 